Hi, my name is Ed Hammerly from NJ Renewable Energy. Um, if you're just joining us, this is part two of my lithium iron battleborne battery system, solar array uh, for my Eagle Cap 1165 truck camper. Uh, the first video was basically why you'd want to do such a thing. Uh, but part two is the nitty gritty and how I actually did it. I'm going to go through all the systems, show you uh, how I connected into the existing uh, system, uh, what type of materials I used and so on and so forth. Um, one thing I would say is I think you definitely want to have a medium to high level skill level of working with your hands and uh, knowing construction, knowing electrical systems and so forth. Um, but that being said, the, the most difficult part for me was trying to integrate it into the existing system. Doing these, the battery system, doing the solar is pretty straightforward as long as you're reasonably good at, uh, at using tools and so forth. Uh, but, but when you buy a new truck camper and now you're tearing things apart and, and connecting uh, an outside source system into the existing, it uh, can be a little tricky and you definitely want to make sure you know what you're doing. Um, I was fortunate enough to get the line diagrams for this camper, which uh, helped me. Um, but anyway, just keep that in mind uh, as you move forward. So I, I would say there's five basic systems on this uh, battery, uh, Battleborne system that I've installed. Uh, one is the platform itself of the battery and the uh, Victron MultiPlus um, unit. So that, that's one. Uh, number two is the uh, solar array on the roof. Um, number three is your AC system. Number four is your DC system. And number, uh, number five is uh, what I would say is your converter. Um, I upgraded to a lithium iron, lithium ion converter that will uh, hit the batteries pretty hard when you plug into shore power or using your generator. So that way, uh, you pull up to a campsite and maybe the batteries are low, uh, you can really get yourself back uh, to full charge so when you go boondocking for the next couple days or you're off somewhere else where you don't have the luxury of having sure power, uh, you would have uh, a full battery. Anyway, so let's dig in here, let's start with the battery system and let me show you what I did. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go into what's called the uh, basement. This is the truck camper and uh, basically this is for storage. I was able to, if you looked at the other video, pick up an extra uh, space in my in my camper because I this is normally where you have the batteries, but because lithium iron batteries don't off gas, uh, I'm not obligated to use this. So I wound up finding finding a void space inside the truck camper here in the back um, where I could stick my batteries and gain some space. It also, um, I would argue puts the, the weight of the batteries more centered in the truck and not on the tail. So it's your, uh, your um, the weight in your truck is, is better balanced. And like I said here on this side, and now I have a, a compartment to access to put anything I want in there. And as a matter of fact, I uh, ran an AC outlet here so that I can power batteries or whatever. If we have go to a party and have a, uh, a tailgate and have a blender out here, we can uh, run, uh, run anything we want. Okay. So so here we go. This is the Victron Multi Plus. In this case, it's a 3000 watt inverter. Um, and then we're sort of going backwards here. Actually, you hear the heat running. I have the heat running inside so I can be a little warmer when I do the inside portion. But this is very important because look, here we are. This ductwork itself is not blowing air directly, but because it's not insulated, it heats this. This is heated space. So my batteries in the wintertime are, are kept at a temperature uh, where they will perform and take a charge or discharge at, at the proper temperature. Um, all right, so I would advocate, as I said, to start, if you're gonna do this project, to start with the batteries. Lay out this platform. So the first thing that I did was get some angle iron and some strapping and make sure the batteries were secured during travel. It's super, super basic. You're gonna have your three batteries or whatever the case is. Your batteries hooked to, in this case, this is one odd wiring. The one odd wiring comes out obviously on the positive and negative side. Uh, this is the negative. So this is my shunt. And this shunt, just to make so you understand, nothing can be on the, on the, the shunt has to be the first device that the negative side comes to and you cannot have anything connected between the shunt and the battery, otherwise it will um, disrupt the, the data collection. Um, and you'll see right here, this is the power supply. To the shunt there's a wire that runs to the battery um, on the and then on the negative side it then comes to this bus bar and then the bus bar goes uh, into the multi plus on the positive side 
these are all daisy chains. So this is in parallel, right? So I'm going from positive to positive to positive. Same thing on the other side, negative, negative. Uh, it's very important that you keep the distances between uh, terminals the same. Uh, otherwise, you'll have diff different resistance. So from each one of these wires right here is the same distance. And that's the same thing as far as coming out to, um, actually, once you leave the battery, it doesn't matter. But, but in this case, I kept them the same size or same length. Um, so here you'll see it on the positive side, it comes to a fuse and then to a, a disconnect and then to the bus bar and then to the multi plus. So this is basically it, this platform. Um, we can also look here at my, at my bus bar. Um, first off, you'll see this on the multi plus, you'll see a ground wire. This ground here I have running back inside my camper to the, the main grounding uh, bar of the entire camper. But let's go back to the positive and negative bus bar and discuss. Personally, I think this is the best way to do this. I've seen some systems where they, they wire things directly to the batteries or directly to the multi-plus, but this is the cleanest and most professional and I think safest way to do things. Here I've labeled every single wire so you know what goes where. It's also a good idea to have both the positive and negative wires exit off the opposite ends of the battery. One thing I wanted to mention about this project that I didn't initially, I said this is one ot wire, which it is. Um, it's sized properly for the demands of this camper. Uh, but what's special about it uh, that you can't necessarily notice just by looking at it, it that, is that, that this wire is called polar wire. Uh, this wire is designed uh, originally for the Arctic. Um, it has many strands of copper wire inside as opposed to um, you know a smaller amount. I think a standard one out wire may have 20 or 30, whatever the case is. This is in, um, you know around a thousand or so, if not more. Uh, so it's very flexible. So it's really nice or why I wanted to use it. It's just when you're in little spaces and needing to bend this wire around to do the things that you want to do, uh, it's just a lot easier to work with. Um, it also, uh, uh, current can flow a lot easier through it. Uh, you may or may not know, but wire doesn't actually, or electricity doesn't actually flow through the, the middle of a wire, it flows on the outside. So when you have multiple strands or thousands of strands, you have uh, more surface area for the current to flow. So um, it works better, it's easier to work with, and for the small amount of wire that you need for a project like this, um, I think it's a really, really good idea. So here is the solar side of my system. I currently have three modules, three panels. Uh, each of them, they are go power, uh, 100 watt modules. So I have a total of 300 watts. Um, the truth of the matter is this came with the camper. I'm delighted they installed it uh, ahead of time. So I, it was a worry that I didn't have, uh, but the truth be said, I, I wish the module size was larger. So I actually may, I'm really not, interested in drilling any more holes in the roof because I just w w when doing so there's always some amount of risk but uh, my intention is to replace these three modules these are 100 watts like I said um, and replace them with you know 170s the uh, go power makes a 170 panel now granted it's a little larger so I'm gonna have to modify my bracketing uh, but for now I have 300 watts I can I do have more uh, space on the roof so I can always go bigger if I like, uh, but I may just upgrade what I have. So how did I hook up the AC side of things? The gray and black conduit is my AC in of generator or shore power. The orange wire is my 30 amps of AC out. I took the orange wire from the transfer switch and ran it into this junction box. Here I split it two ways. The first way I ran through a 15 amp breaker and then ran it to my converter inside the camper. In the other direction I ran the wire from the junction box to the AC in of the Victron MultiPlus. On the AC out of the MultiPlus, I ran that wire 
to the AC breaker panel inside the truck camper. Here's what it looks like on the wiring diagram. Originally my Eagle Cap camper came with a solar charge controller here. It was made by GoPower. It was the charge controller as well as the um, display. Um, I removed that as you can see. So for now, this is sort of a split system here. My charge controller is in the bathroom. Uh, it's located here behind this hatch, uh, behind this access, access hatch. Here's my uh, solar coming in um, from the roof. This goes to my battery, pretty self-explanatory. Um, what I do have is <clears throat> this cable right here runs to the color display um, that you see here. So it's getting data from that. This is the, the BVM712 that is my, uh, gives me data collection from the battery. This, in addition to the charge controller, this is connected to the color display. And thirdly, the, a, a wire runs, I guess it's sort of like a Cat 5e wire, runs from my multi plus unit to here. So all the data runs, I, there's wires running, three wires run, run running to this uh, display, one to the charge controller, and one to the multi plus. This thing is straight up amazing. Um, I really like it because it's just it gives you a great visualization of what is going on. So even if I have people staying on my camper that are friends or family that don't understand and know the system as well as I do, uh, this is why I did it. You didn't need it. You can get what's called a dongle and look at a lot of this stuff just on your phone. But I wanted the ability for friends and family or myself to just be able to visually look uh, at things and know where what the capacity of the of the RV is at any given moment. Uh, the other big thing which I described in the first video, which I'll describe again, is that the, the ability to change um, the amperage that's coming into the, ca to the camper. So the Multi Plus itself normally wants to draw 50 amps. So because this is a 30 amp RV, I needed to alter it. But I can also do this um, anytime I want. Anytime I go somewhere, if I plug into an outlet that's only 15 amps or 20 amps uh, or 30 amps, I can change it. But more importantly, if I go to a campsite where they their power is limited and it keeps blowing the fuse as opposed to having to run out and keep flipping the breaker because there's a problem, I can control the amperage here so that it's not a problem. And then if it can't make the power itself off of the AC supply from the shore power, it will uh, do it combined with the batteries. So uh, there's a zillion different things this thing can do. I'm not going to spend the time, but if you go on their site, you can read about it. There's a ton of videos. Check it out. All right, now let's look at the AC DC converter side of things. So the panel is located right down here near the floor. All right, so I'll give you a quick overview. This is the AC side, DC side, converter. Converter converts AC to DC. So if we plug into short power, uh, this will supply power to the all the fuses here on the DC side, as well as charging the batteries. But what's, as I mentioned, we already replaced this um, converter with a lithium style. So what this does is it's going to just charge it at a lot faster rate. So this is uh, a really good addition to this entire system because when we go to a campsite, and we plug into shore power, not only do we of course have power on the DC side, but it's really gonna hit the lithium batteries hard. And we're gonna have, um, even if the batteries are completely drained, we're gonna, we're gonna fill all 300 amp hours in less than three hours and be ready to go anywhere boondocking. Okay, so this was originally set up where the AC came in here to my 30 amp breaker and supplied obviously the rest of the breakers here on the line, um, however, Originally, this 15 amp breaker supplied the AC to the converter originally. Uh, we're doing it directly now. So what happened is we removed this wire and it opened up this breaker space. So this is the breaker that I used when I mentioned earlier, uh, the outlet in the old battery compartment in the rear has, a, has an outlet. Well, that's where I got my power from. AC-DC converter on this side, 
On the other side of the island, in this little compartment, is the backside of all the wiring, plumbing, and so forth. So that's the, the backside of the panel. Uh, but the reason why I'm showing you this is here is where I grab the ground. This is a, um, a grounding bar for all the grounding side of things for the truck camper. And that's where I tied in. And don't forget, we had to purchase this Micro Air Easy Start, install it on the rooftop underneath our air conditioner unit. That way we can even run AC with battery power only. And that's my installation in a nutshell. I hope you liked it. For more information about solar thermal and photovoltaic, we do residential and commercial, please contact us at njrenewableenergy.com. Thank you.